You're in for a real treat this morning as we hear from six of our youth group members who participated in this summer's mission trips uh, to uh, Hearts of Palm here with the middle school and to uh, Kentucky with the high school. So I'd like to invite our three middle school missioners up uh, at this time and uh, we will have them and then the, uh, the high school missioners and then Dave will talk and then we have a very short little video to give you some visuals. Welcome. Hi, I'm Grace Pavoli. I'm a seventh grader here at St. Mark's School and fourth generation church member. I'm so glad to be here today to tell you about the wonderful experience I had the week of June 9th. This opportunity was given to me by none other than Dave Stankowitz, the man who just gets it, or should I say gets us, and Kayla, who inspires me every day and always puts a smile on my face. For those of you who don't know, Dave is our youth director here and one of the most amazing people I know. To begin with, in the morning we went to VBS, or Vacation Bible School. The way we praised God was by song about his works. We sang in the mornings and learned dances. And on the last day, we put on a performance for the parents. The smiles on all the children's faces just made your morning and started the day off great. The first afternoon, we went to the food bank. Our job was to sort out the good food from the expired food and then pack it. All the food would then be loaded up and taken to the people who needed it. Just knowing that we were helping families, even in a simple way, felt like a huge accomplishment and reminded me how fortunate I am that God has given me a kitchen full of food. For the next two days, we went to a Christian school in Pahokee to help fix up the kitchen and bring school supplies. I'm not sure how many of you have been to Pahokee, but my first impression was, we live in the same county, and what a difference between St. Mark's and this school. We have the Sleepy Center, STEM Lab, updated classrooms, a gym across the street, and they don't even have 75 books in their library. This was just the beginning of me realizing how lucky and fortunate I really am. The two ladies, one being the principal and the other the daughter of the owners who helped run the school, prayed with us. And you could just see how grateful they were that we were going to help them. We fixed up the kitchen by giving it a fresh kind of paint and cleaning it, which took two afternoons. I felt God. It was like he was with us that entire time, inspiring us to do important work and fulfill his word. Once we got back to the gym, we showered off, played games or basketball for around 15 minutes, and then ate. We prayed before every single meal, whether there was Father Cook praying, Dave, or one of the kids on the trip. And every time, and I mean every single time, I felt so much closer to God. And I was reminded of how blessed I am to have the privilege to be a part of the mission trip, have a great school, a loving family to come home to, a place to call home, and to be involved in such an amazing community. Again, I'm so glad to have had this opportunity to go closer to God, and I plan to go again this summer. Any middle schooler and all middle schoolers should definitely think about taking part in next year's mission trip. Thank you. Hello. My name is Liliana Hall, but most of you know me as Lily. This summer I went on my first middle school youth group mission trip. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. <laughs> I must admit, the second Dave mentioned the trip, I couldn't get it off my mind. I was so excited to... <laughs> this, is not, this is not how the first two went. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> I, I was so excited to finally have... I couldn't get it off my mind. I was so excited to finally have a real opportunity to help others. Although I had spent the last three years helping at St. George with my grandpa, the famous Joe Mova, this, wouldn't be, this would be the first time doing community service on my own. At the end of sixth grade, I decided I wanted to switch, <laughs> I wanted to switch it from St. Mark's to Duncan Middle School. It might be awkward from time to time, but I still enjoy seeing my friends from St. Mark's, as annoying as they can be when fighting, when fighting over the room and the forts we made in the fitness room during the trip. Thank you. Of course, this was just for the girls. Only three of us girls, plus overall wonderful Kayla, and amazing singer, singer Devin, our chaperones, made a small group that led to our gossiping, which may have extended our lights out a bit, but don't tell Dave. <laughs> the boys, nine of them plus Dave, camped out in the gym. I hope they had as much fun as we did, but I doubt that's possible. Our day began around 6.30. We would wake up and get ready to eat breakfast. 
pack our lunches and head across the street to help with VBS. After VBS, we did something different every day. We either helped at a food bank sorting food or at a small school in Pahokee painting and cleaning. While in Pahokee, I realized that a cockroach would not kill me, although they can survive three days without a head, which is still disgusting. <laughs> the best part was working together with my friends, getting to know the girls better, and even some of the boys, and feeling good about what had been accomplished. Of course, it was not all work. There was planned fun like the beach and the big trip to the rapids, but the rain had canceled those. Dave made it up to us by sending us all to Flying Panda, an indoor trampoline park. I am definitely planning on going again next year, whether Dave agrees or not. <laughs> and I recommend letting your middle school kids go next summer for just one week. Hi, my name is Andrew D'Souza. I attended the St. Mark's Hearts of Palm mission trip in June to help as a camp counselor and as a volunteer for the community. It was a fulfilling and a humbling experience, and let me tell you why. To start off, I did not know many of the current seventh graders, but during that week, many things changed. For starters, I grew my friendship with many of the people on the mission trip by spending the week working with them to help others. In addition, I strengthened my relationship with God through our daily reflection of each experience that day. Every day, we would wake and share breakfast together. After, we would head across the street to help out with Vacation Bible School and watching over the kids, singing songs, and teaching them the importance of God. After we returned from Vacation Bible School, we would have, head over to a mission where they could use our help. We volunteered our time at the food bank as well as helping to paint a kitchen in Pahokee. Working at the Palm Beach County Food Bank was a humbling experience, seeing how, many people cared, seeing how people cared enough to take time out of their day in order to donate food that can help the less fortunate. At the food bank, we sorted and packed food by expiration date, and we had boxes and boxes of food to stock the shelves. In addition to the food bank, we also helped paint a, a kitchen in Pahokee. During this process, we also donated many school supplies that will help those kids have the education that every child deserves. As half of our team painted, we did a little reorganizing in order for the staff to stay orderly and be able to teach the students without any distractions. The only appreciation we needed was seeing the smiles and hearing the thank yous from all of the people we assisted. So many people need our help to see the miracles that God creates. Coming out of the mission trip, my relationship with God and the people I friended had me smiling for the rest of the summer. I learned many things this summer, but the most important was what I learned from the mission trip. I learned that we are extremely fortunate and we take a lot for granted, which is why we must do everything we can to help those in need. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad, for sending me on this life-changing mission trip. And thank you, especially St. Mark's and Hearts of Palm, for bringing this together. Last but not least, thank you, Dave and Kayla. Hello, my name is Christopher Kemmer. I'm a 10th grader at the King's Academy, and I was asked to come up here today and speak about this past summer's St. Mark's mission trip. This year, we went to Irvine, Kentucky, and I don't think I'll be able to explain how amazing it was. When we got to Irvine, it was very noticeable that we were no longer in West Palm Beach. When we were heading to St. Timothy's, which is the place we stayed at during our trip, we passed by many homes and we passed through their town square. We could tell it was a poorer part of the country, and I think the drive up to St. Timothy's was truly an eye-opener on why we were there. On our first day at St. Timothy's, we went to help a woman named Wilma. We went to her house and we worked on reinsulating her roof and insulating the bottom portion of her house with aluminum sheet. Wilma was one of the kindest and most grateful people that I have ever met, and we could see how much our work meant to her. And over our days of meeting different people, it was safe to say that she was a great representation for the people there. Everybody that we met had a smile on their face and they were always kind to us. Another activity that we took part of was casket building. It may sound odd, but it was very important. This is because the caskets that we built were actually going to people in Irvine who needed them. And to be able to give these caskets to people who would not be able to afford them is truly heartwarming. 
I would like to make a note that all of the work was, that was previously listed would not have been possible without the help of all of you. A few weeks before the trip, we held various fundraisers. These, the proceeds went to help pay for supplies and other necessities. I was able to attend a few of these church fundraisers and to basically see all of the members of the church donating was mind blowing. I had this reaction because I know all of you only had a basic understanding of what we'd be doing in Kentucky and that didn't stop you from trying to be a part of it. I wish that those people in Irvine could have seen you all here today because if they could have seen all the people behind this, I know they would have been speechless. So overall, I'd like to say thank you. This was truly an amazing experience and it would not have been possible without the help of all of you. Hi, my name is Wilson Goins. I'm a sophomore at Dwyer. And this summer, I met a 40-year-old groundskeeper named Manford. Manford did not have a college education. Manford did not even have a high school education. He didn't know us, and he most certainly did not talk like us. Oftentimes, when we were talking to him, we could not understand a thing he was saying because of his thick accent. But nonetheless, despite many cultural differences between us and the majority of the people in Irvine, Kentucky, we made a lasting impact. We drove 14 hours and just under 1,000 miles away from all of our families and friends, and I think it can go without saying that most of us were on edge. We settled into our new home thanks to a foosball table there and this game called Skittle. Skittle was where you would spin a small wooden dreidel and it would hit wooden bowling pins and knock them down for points. The first day, we went and helped a lady named Wilma. Wilma was someone who harvests blackberries and she was having problems with the pipes below her house freezing up in the winter. Over the course of two days, we set out to help her, and we started by cutting thin sheets of metal and drilled them into the bottom of her RV so that they, so that they went into the dirt and covered the gaps under her house. We also installed downspouts on the gutters of St. Timothy's. We dug a small trench and installed a pipe to drain them and built a casket. The casket was definitely an experience because I'd never built anything like it before, and it made everyone involved feel a little on edge. All the all the same, we built it, and it was the best gosh darn casket that Kentucky has ever had. <laughs> we, also, we also installed new gutters on Manford house, Manford's house that hopefully will last some decades to come. Throughout all these projects, it made, this for the, it made this the most meaningful mission trip to me and my favorite so far. I've now been on five mission, trip, mission trips with St. Mark's, all doing relatively the same work. We would travel through Palm Beach County with hearts of palm and give people experiences with God or help them have a good time while we were there. We went to Costa Rica and did vacation Bible school so that kids would have something to do while they weren't in school. Regardless of where we went, we were always giving people experiences and connections with God. Not to take away from how amazing that is, but I always wondered what happened after we left, how we affected them in the long term. If one of them were to lose their connection with God, would all of our work have been in vain? Every time I thought more and more about these questions, I would always come up shorthanded and start to feel like I hadn't accomplished all that much. However, this mission trip was different in that we didn't spend too much time doing any of those activities, but rather manual labor. Perhaps it wasn't because Irvine doesn't have a ton of kids in it and isn't very densely populated, or maybe the mission leaders were trying to switch things up, but we focused on a different type of work. We fixed our homes for them. They would tell St. Timothy's their problem, and we were able to find ways to solve it. That made me feel good about how I chose to spend this past summer. Because I know if, that is there, if there is one unlucky family that tragedy strikes and one of their family members passes away, they won't have to spend money on a casket. Or that if one of Irvine's notorious pop-up thunderstorms comes through, Manfred's gutters will be able to handle any amount of rain, and we will have helped him. I can now rest assured knowing that every winter when Wilma is able to have hot water because her pipes won't freeze, she'll think of us and be grateful. That is a gift that keeps on giving, and I'm glad to have been able to give it to her and all the others we touched. I'm Jackson Isham. I'm a 11th grader at Jupiter Christian, and this summer I went to Irvine, Kentucky. So when I first heard that we were, first, first heard that we were going to Kentucky for our mission trip, I was really confused because it doesn't seem like a place that we would go for a mission trip because I had gone on a few mission trips here at St. Mark's. We had gone to New York and Costa Rica and even just around Palm Beach County. And Kentucky was very different from all those other trips. When we were there, we did a lot of manual labor. Uh, on the first day, we went to Wilma's house where unlike the others, um, me and a few other people were on the roof of her house, caulking holes in it and 
So that was actually really scary because it was right on the edge of a mountain. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and also being able to work on the gutters and the drainage at St. Timothy's was also very good. Um, we were able to be able to help the people in the community and able to see them all on this one night that we all came together and a bunch of people from the community and we were able to eat with them and talk with them and hear all their stories. Almost just as importantly as being able to impact the community, I think we all made an impact on each other because on the way up there, we were very disconnected from each other. We were all on our phones for most of the ride. Uh, we didn't really talk to each other, but after spending a week very close together and no phones and just disconnected, and all we pretty much had was each other, on the way back, instead of really focusing on what was going on outside of our trip, we were still focusing on each other and being able to spend time with each other. Uh, and for that, I just want to, I just say thank you because that was honestly just making connections with people, like stronger connections with people that I know. It was just amazing. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dave. <laughs> Let me start out with a question I heard from Mark, Mark Orchester. He's a youth guru. He asked, do you see teenagers as a problem to be solved or a wonder to behold? Maybe that sounds like a weird question to ask since it's Youth Mission Weekend and we're celebrating our youth accomplishments over the summer. But it's a real question, because I would say that over half the world sees teenagers as a problem to, to be fixed. Let's come back to this question. Don't worry, there'll be a happy ending. Um, but I wanted to uh, say a story uh, that relates to this question and also relates to today's gospel reading. In my sophomore year of high school, it seemed like not much was happening in my favor. I was injured in a football game in the beginning of the year. This injury kept me out of all other sports the rest of the year. In return, my grades took a dive. Some of my relationships became pretty rocky as well. I was going through many things a, a teen, teenager goes through um, on a regular basis, just the normal stuff as well. One Sunday I was at church and definitely didn't want to be there. I didn't know what to think of this religion thing anyway. So about halfway through I dismissed myself from the service and hung out in the car and waited for my mother and, and little brother to come out. When church ended, the pastor asked where my mom, where he, my mom, where he he could find me. He left the greeting line, kind of like uh, in the gospel reading. He left the ninety-nine to come and find me, the one. He could sense something was going on within me. He just wanted to come out and talk to me and eventually pray with me in the parking lot. And I'll never forget that. Now, let's go back to that question. Do you see teenagers as a problem to be solved or a wonder to behold? Well, St. Mark's, I can answer that for you because U.S. St. Mark's church and school see youth and teenagers as a wonder to behold. Now, yeah, of course, you may wonder what on earth they're thinking or even saying at times. 
or they may seem broken at times and, and maybe you think they can't be fixed. I think uh, you'd agree that could be all of us at one point in our lives. But you see, but you see them as a wonder to behold. You love them. I love them. Many times I've seen the clergy go after the one. I've seen you, the church, go after and support the one. The youth in our church and school are in a unique place here. Thank you for loving our children and showing them the love of the Lord. As we continue to love and show God's love to our youth at St. Mark's, things will work out for them. And it did for me when I was the one. I'm sure you all can say the same thing or reflect things about yourself as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting our youth, not just with funds, but with the perfect love that God provides. What a privilege it is to work with you to continue to show our wonders to behold or sometimes the one, his, his love. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, and all six of our speakers today. And it's great to have uh, many of the other youth here as well for this special um, morning. Uh, after the service, as I mentioned, please join us in Coleman Hall for a, a barbecue lunch. We have a short little video. It's a, it's a little one, and uh, it's great, though. Lots of good imagery for all of the stories that you just heard. It's been a long day. We've been traveling for 12 hours from Atlanta to uh, We're caulking a roof and I'm afraid of heights.
Here at St. Timothy's, they build caskets for people who can't afford them. Here are some of the completed ones. Okay, what are we doing today? Today we're making caskets fit to Father Groff's measurements. Precisely tailored to them. Right now, we've got the sides of the casket done. With most of the sanding done, the casket is starting to take its shape. So if you have a friend in Irvine, Kentucky, who's six foot three, there's, a, there's something waiting there for them. All right. Again, thank you, uh, and thanks for everything that you all do to support the youth and the mission. Uh, they are a wonder to behold. Amen.